The purpose of this recording is to demonstrate the battle rhythm tool sweep. First, I need to brief a couple of different data types that enable the tool. The first is the platform directory. Burstcore does approximately eight major training or operations a year, and in each operation, the information environment is different. We have a standard set of tools, but which ones will be available and who they'll be able to talk to varies by operation. This platform directory allows us to identify the tools that will be available and who they will be able to talk to. And this curated list of options become the options for the event charter or seven minute drill matrix pace plan so that the staff is able to select from realistic options and make those decisions informed by who they'll be able to talk to and what they'll be able to do using those options. The next data set I need to cover is the products. So to conduct an event, a set of products are required. And then as a result of event, often products are produced. This Product matrix constitutes all the products that feed into are are produced by battle room events, as well as products that feed from product to product. The staff, as they fill out an event charter or seven minute drill, are able to identify what products are inputs, and those show here as event inputs. What products are outputs? And those show up here as event outputs for their battle rhythm event. They're also able in the product matrix to identify if there are any products required to produce this product and if this product is required to produce any other product. Once we have this data, we're able to use it to derive an information flow diagram. The final data set is the seven minute drill matrix which shows all the seven minute drills that First Corps maintains, both the ones that are part of the current plan battle rhythm and the ones that have been in the past and maybe in the future a part of a battle rhythm. From the seven minute drill matrix, we can drill down into a seven minute drill. Here we get all the information that an Office of Primary Responsibility or an attendee needs to understand about a battle room event. Why we do it, how we do it, when we do it, what headquarters knows participate in it, what headquarters node owns it, what the inputs are, what the outputs are, who the key leaders of the event are, and who has to attend the event as well as the agenda. To update the seven minute drill, they're able to drill down into a form that facilitates all the data entry. This data that we enter in the seven minute drill then automatically populates the battle rhythm. So here we have the battle rhythm that first core fight thought off of in our most recent operation. At the top, we have the time zones that are relevant to the operation, the bottom one being the time zone that the operation occurred in. Then we have the top line, which is the higher headquarters events that First Corps needs to be involved in. And then we have swim lanes, individual swim lanes for each of the top five leaders. So they're able to see exactly what they'll be doing each step of the day. We have the shift changes defined by the vertical orange lines. And we also have below that in gray, each of the organizations that are the Office of Primary Responsibility for a battle rhythm event and the events that they're responsible for. A user can come into this tool and hover over any event and they get a flyout that spells out the event and then they can use the same drill down 
from here and on into editing that was available from the seven minute drill matrix. The color coding here is the method by which First Corps prioritizes battle rhythm events. And all of that is laid out in the legend below. What this doesn't do is show a particular organization other than the top five, what their day will look like each event that they need to participate in. The staff matrix fills that gap. So in the staff matrix, we have on the left each of the battle rhythm events. And then across the top, we have each of the entities that need to participate in battle rhythm events. So if I am fires, I can go down my line and see each event I need to participate in. I have rover I get the fly out and then I have the same drill down I did on the battle rhythm and seven minute drill matrix to get more amplifying information. As the battle rhythm manager, I can look at this and go down the line and see where a single entity is required to do two things at the same time. And depending on the bench depth of that entity, that may be a conflict that needs to be worked out by a improvement to the battle rhythm. As the subordinate organization, the first things I want to know when I fall under first core are what battle rhythm events do I need to attend. With the beat green background on the right, we have the subordinate organization events. The commander needs to attend these events. The generalist LNO that's on site with the core can cover these events. And an informed specialist representative is needed for these events. That way the subordinate organization immediately knows what's required. The core operates all across the Indo-Pacific theater, so we provide a time zone table to allow us to understand how the battle rhythm lays out across all the time zones. As the battle rhythm manager, if I'm preparing a new battle rhythm or a revision to the battle rhythm, I make all the changes in the seven minute drills and changes are highlighted in red. You can see some changes that were part of the last revision highlighted red in these locations. Once I had the battle rhythm ready for a request for approval from the chief of staff, I can hit the print preview and it takes me out to a print layout with all the header information as it will be in the published document. If I need to publish again, I can simply click the PDF button here and it will save this new version in the battle rhythm library with the naming convention intact. And then to send that out for approval, I can click the email button and I get a preformatted email. I can type in what the changes were and send this off for approval right here from the tool. To make this tool sustainable over time, We've prepared a settings screen that allows us to modify everything that shows on the battle rhythm. So when I go from operation to operation, I can update the pertinent information or when I change the version. If I am ready to publish a final battle rhythm, this removes the pre-decisional watermark. If I'm pre-exercise or post-exercise, I can turn off the lock that prevents staff organizations from changing things in the seven minute drills that will affect the battle rhythm. That way everyone can make changes. When it is locked, only the three battle rhythm managers can make changes. If I click the reset change status button, the red highlights from the previous revision will go away so that I can start on any revision. Here I can change the higher headquarters. And here I can change where the shift changes bars show up on the battery. rhythm. 
If I need to amend the template for the email, I can do it here. If I need to change the time zones that appear at the top of the battle rhythm, I can do it here. And for the staff matrix, I can identify which battle rhythm events show up where on the staff matrix. This concludes this demonstration. For any questions, please contact me, Major Aubrey Dustin.